computer. Hello, everyone. I have uh, Catherine Lee here with me. Uh, she's a graduate student here at Cal Poly, and she will be joining Caltrans uh, in a few weeks here. And she has graciously agreed to teach me how do I take a Synchro network that might be built out in Synchro and sort of transfer it into PTV vSIM, where you might be able to do more things. For a smaller network, probably it doesn't hold as much value for you to translate into vSIM because vSIM can sort of look at the network level things. But if you have a bigger network built out in Synchro, this might be an extremely useful thing, which Katie is demonstrating today with a very small network but the process is exactly the same. It just takes a little bit longer time to do it, but the process is the same. So Katie, do you wanna uh, show, tell me first what this network is about? What, what, are, what, are we, what are we looking at on the screen? And then maybe go through the process of what we need to do in Synchro first, and then what we do, what do we need to do in, in PTV vSIM to translate it? Sure. Um, so just to give you a little background about this little network that we have. Um, so this is actually used on our lab number seven for CE421. So that's a traffic engineering class here at Cal Poly. Um, this is just a network that my group and I built over that. Um, I did have to make some minor adjustments since that was made at a um, later version of Synchro, but there's a newer one at Synchro 11. Um, other than just building your network, you want to make sure that it is um, kind of snug onto the map. So make sure that it's angled correctly. Just make sure it's built the way it looks like in real life. So you want to make sure as accurate as possible. So and this, for this, um, and this location is in San Luis Obispo, Madonna yes. Road, uh, US 101. It's in San Luis Obispo, California, uh, and uh, Delhi Dio Drive, and all these and these traffic counts you probably obtained from the city and Caltrans. So all of that right. process, you're assuming here that you know how to build out, build out yes. a synchro network. So yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, Katie. So um, for this, we did have to work with signals. So you just want to make sure that your signal timing, everything, the cycle length is all correct in here before you move it over to VSIM. And that will make sure that it's more accurate there as well, because it would just be a hassle to have to um, kind of tweak everything when you get to VSIM. So other than that, you just want to make sure um, that everything is correct. And um, a lot of times you would want to import like volumes or whatever to CSV file. Um, however, for here, if you want to import it to VISM, you want to um, actually get all of the information into CSV. So how do you do that is you go to file and you go to save as. And for here, um, I already have it saved should have it saved, but if not, um, you want to make sure that it is a comma delineated file. You want to make sure that that is the correct file type, which I already have here, because um, that is what file um, VISM actually reads. So you want to make sure that you save that. So click save. I already have it saved here. And then what you want to do is go to VISM. You want to open a brand new file for VISM. And we're just going to wait for it to load. So once you have VISM up, you'll see this new screen. Um, instead of clicking anywhere of like open a brand new one, you just want to go to file, import, and it'll have a drop down menu and you want to go to synchro. So when, you, when this dialog box comes up, you want to click the three dots and you want to click the comma delineated file that you have. Uh, most of the time, it's just going to show you that comma de delineated file anyways. So you just want to click on it click open. VISM files path is wherever you want that VISM file to go to. So for me, um, I just want it in the downloads um, just for convenience for right now, but you can put it in any folder that if you want to keep like your research or anything, if you have a specific folder you want to put it in, make sure you put it in that folder. Um, so every other extension will also go in there as well. So you want to just click OK. So you just want to make a final check that this is a CSV file, and then you also want to make sure that your files path is where you want it to go. So all you have to do is just click import and then continue. Um, that dialog box just basically tells you that, oh yeah, this thing has um, a signal file in it. So just giving an FYI and you want to just click OK. So it'll definitely show you warnings. It is OK unless it actually says errors, but for right now, um, this does not show any errors. So we're just going to ignore it. 
So one thing that you, you're gonna notice is that like, okay, the background is no longer there. Well, um, the background is there, except for it's actually in the middle of like the Atlanta Ocean. So you wanna make sure you move that to the correct location. So how you do that is you right click and then you go to map this point to a background position, okay? So you click that and it kind of moves your whole network together. So if you have a bigger network, all you have to just click a point, right click it and it'll drag that whole entire network. So you don't have to actually individually click on each link. So what you wanna do is zoom all the way out. So remember this location is in San Luis Obispo, Madonna Road specifically. So you kind of wanna move that over to approximately where that location is. So I wanna say that it's near, it's in California. So I'm just gonna place it here. I'm just gonna drop it down. Okay, so it's in this location, yes, it's very tiny. But what we're going to do next is we want to switch over the map provider. So instead of this Bing map that we have, um, you can't really tell which roads. This is having road names, it might be a little difficult. You just want to switch it over to either any of these would work. So I like to use gravel pit. Some people like to use default. So what this does is um, it kind of shows like what lo location it is. So I'm just gonna go grab my network, which is right here. Oh, this thing is not there. Right here. And all right, so now you have that. You just want to find your approximate location. So this is San Luis Obispo. So we're going to go back. Right here. So we know that Madonna Road is right over here and Delio is right here. So you kind of want to drop it here. It's okay if you don't get like the exact location. For example, if I purposely do this, like it's not in the correct location. Um, so for example, you want Delio Drive to actually align with it. So you can just click this end because wherever position you click on, that's where the point is going to grab for you to move around in the background. So all you have to do is just move that and then click it over here and that's it. That's how you move your network over to the specific location that you would want it to be. So then now if I just want to run this network, does it mm -hmm. just run? Yes. So, so basically you you're just, right. So um, when you do single work, you basically already put in all the volumes and everything already. So basically you'll just play it like you would. First, it'll save the um, file. And then when it's ready, it'll start running. So it's now going. As you can see, there's like vehicles already. So. That's great. This, this, is, this is wonderful. And then obviously, if you have a larger network and if you want to take mm -hmm. advantage of vSIM's network functionality, you might have to re-input the volumes and whatnot. You can add volumes, right. you, can, you can sort of define the network, but it still yes. saves you a lot of time in terms of you know, building out a new network. And because um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of, lot of communities have network in, in, in Syncro that right. you might wanna do some more analytical type work in, in vSIM. So, so this is, this is fun, very useful. Okay, all right, this is wonderful. Thank you, Katie. Yep, no problem.